we have completed the basic system properties of continuous time systems and now from this lecture we will begin our discussion on basic system properties of discrete time systems and in this particular lecture we are going to understand how to find out if the given discrete time system is a static system or a dynamic system therefore we are going to have discussion on static and dynamic discrete time systems and we know the fact that a system is said to be static system if the output which is the present output depends only on the present values of input so if the output which is the present output is depending on the present input we will say the system is a static system on the other hand a system is said to be dynamic system if the output which is the present output depends on the past or the future values of input at any instant of time now this point at any instant of time is very important to understand for example for one instant let's say n equal to 0 you are getting the present output depending on the present input so you will say the system is a static system but if at n equal to 1 the present output is depending on the past input then you will say the system is dynamic no matter you got the present output depending on the present input when n is equal to 0 you got one instant of time at which the present output is depending on the past input therefore the system will be dynamic in nature even if you check for other values of n and you get the present output depending on the present input still the system will be dynamic because at one instant you got present output depending on the past input so this is all you should know about the static system and the dynamic system and now we will move on to the example number one to make things more clear in the first example we are having the output y n equal to x minus n now let's understand the basics first we are having a system which is discrete time system and to that discrete time system we are providing input xn and the output of the discrete time system is yn so this is the discrete time system we are having and the input to this discrete time system is xn and the output of this discrete time system is yn now in this particular case you are getting yn equal to x minus n yn is equal to x minus n this means this particular system is performing the time reversal operation on the input and then providing it as the output now let's find out whether the given system is static or dynamic let's check when n is equal to 0 n equal to 0 means this is the present instant of time and at this time we are getting the output y0 because we have yn as the output so this particular output is the present output this is the present output because it is calculated at present instant now from here you can see that when n is equal to 0 you will find x0 so y0 is equal to x0 and therefore we have the input also as the present input so present output is depending on the present input and therefore we can say that the system we are having here is static but wait you cannot conclude this early you need to check for other values of n also so let's 
check when n is equal to 1. So 1 is the present instant and the output we are getting is y1 which is the present output and we will have x minus 1. Now you can notice that the present output, the present output is depending on the past input. This is the past input. This is the past input because you can see the present instant 1 and compared to 1, minus 1 is the past value. Therefore, this input is the past input and present output depending on the past input means the system we are having is dynamic. So dynamic is the answer. Now let's move on to the example number 2. In the second example we are having yn equal to x n plus 1. Now this is fairly easy question. We will start with n equal to 0. This will give us y0 equal to x0 plus 1. This means x1. So we are having the present output. The output here is the present output and it is depending on the future value of input. So the input we are having is future input. It is future input because this is the present instant n equal to 0 and compared to 0 1 is future value. Therefore present output is depending on the future input and this implies the system we are having is dynamic. Now as soon as you get the system as dynamic there is no need to check for other values of n. This will be the answer because here you can see that dynamic systems are those systems in which present output depends on past or future values of input at any instant of time. Now we will discuss the third example. In the third example output yn is equal to summation k equal to minus infinity to plus infinity x k. So let's find out the type of system using the input output relationship. We can write output yn equal to x minus infinity starting from k equal to minus infinity therefore we will have the first term as x minus infinity plus x n minus 1 plus x n. Here x n is the present present input and x minus infinity to x n minus 1 are the past inputs. Therefore you can see that the output is depending on the past inputs and also on the present input. We can say that this is the present input because you can see yn is the present output and here we are having n and here also we are having n. Therefore xn is the present input and compared to n, n minus 1 is the past value. Similarly all the values up to minus infinity are the past values. So all these inputs are the past inputs and therefore we can say that as the present output is depending on the past inputs and also on the present input, the system is dynamic. It is dynamic because there are many past inputs on which the present output is depending. Now let's move on to the homework problems. There are two homework problems. In the first problem, the output yn is equal to the odd part of input xn. You need to tell whether the system having this relationship between output and input is static or dynamic. In the second problem, the output yn is equal to real part of signal xn. Again, you need to tell whether the system having this relationship between output and input is static or dynamic. 
So once you have the answers, post them in comment section. I will end this lecture here. See you in the next one.